Welcome into the Crimson Corner. The Utes just scored another touchdown, Josh, <laughs> at Autzen Stadium. What a week for the Utes. Josh, you could have scored in that game. I think I could have. All right, Josh Furlong, KSL.com. Along for the ride today, he'll have more on the latest news of the Utes, but let's get right to one of the biggest wins in Utah football history. You, we won't know until the end of the season just how big the 62-20 to 20 win at Oregon is. But watching the Utes destroy one of the top football programs in the country for the past decade or more is there's no question that Utah is now a Pac-12 contender. Ute fans, good evening and welcome to Eugene, Oregon and Autzen Stadium. Yet another sellout crowd, 105 consecutive sellout crowds here at Autzen Stadium as Utah, ranked 18th in the country, takes on the 13th ranked Oregon Duck. Travis Wilson keeps to the 45-50. Here he goes, 45-40, 35-30, and down at the Oregon 30-yard line. <laughs> the baby giraffe. The baby giraffe rumbling down the field. He's got Covey open. Touchdown! Touchdown! Brent Covey! Looking, looking into the end zone. Caught! Touchdown! It's Kenneth Scott in the back of the end zone. Blakely, Locky swings it out, wide open, as a touchdown ducks. And just like that. Wilson keeps out on the edge, 35-40, 45-50. He's in the open field, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, and down to the Oregon five-yard line goes the baby giraffe. And he'll pass. Throws the fade toward the corner, up, caught, touchdown! Yes. Touchdown, Caleb Ref! What a catch! Gives it to Booker, nope, he keeps it, on the it. edge, and walks into the end zone, touchdown! Touchdown, Travis Wilson! Been so much over the years. First down to 10 of the 49. Jeff Lockie looking, fires, picked off! This ball intercepted by Marcus Williams. Play action. Nope, he's going to give it to Booker. Oh, it's an option pass. He's got a man open in the end zone. Touchdown! Touchdown! Britton Covey on the pass from Booker. Razzle dazzle and six for the Utes. Intercepted. Wow! Dominique Hatfield. Doing it again. I think our sky cam operator is going to get that camera as far out of there as he possibly can. And it's a high snap, and Hackett's going to run it. Wilson to pass. He's still, he's open, he's open. open, Caleb Rep walks into the end zone, touchdown. Caleb Rep, his second touchdown of the game, which happens to be his second catch of the season. Covey King. And the ball fielded on the opposite side. How about this? Utah's going to run it in for a touchdown. 69 yards! Wow! Four seconds, three, two, and one. And the University of Utah has opened the Pac-12 season with a statement victory over the Oregon Ducks. Utah 62 and Oregon 20. Wow, each week on Sports Beat Sunday at 1045 on KSL, former Ute Christian Cox and Hans Olsen break down the X's and O's of each Utah game. This week they highlight an offensive lineman who played a major role in the Utes' victory. Where we're going to start tonight is, you know, where I think it really made a difference, and that's Aaron Roderick and Travis Wilson, their chemistry, the change in this offense, and the aggressive nature of it. You know, basically, we'll take a look at the play that really dominated or started to dominate in this game. Yeah, and it's been a play that was successful against Michigan. It's a jet sweep. You hear you'll see a G lead from, uh, from Asiata here. You'll see Bubba Poole swing on by, and Travis Wilson will run that, that zone read. He's got a great block from J.J. Dillman who cuts it down, and Travis will, will, will bounce it out there. This is actually called a two-for-one. When your offensive tackle takes out two defenders, that's actually the block that breaks the run. There's some downfield blocking that's really impressive. Uh, Isaac Asiata, the backside guard that pulled, one of the best pullers in the business, just a really solid pulling technique. He's out quick, good hips, shifty, you know, gets just enough that he slows that guy down. 
And that play was there all night. You know, this isn't just a one-day thing or, or a one-game thing or a one-play thing. This was all night long against Oregon. Yeah, offensive line had a great night. Time in four weeks, the Utah players earned Pac-12 Player of the Week honors. Let's start with Travis Wilson, who was the Offensive Player of the Week. His performance against Oregon has to be considered the best of his career. 18 of 30, 227 yards and four touchdowns, no interceptions, no sacks. He also rushed for 100 yards and a touchdown. Kyle Whittingham explains just how good Travis has been this season when healthy. But Travis's best game is a Ute. Right now, he's leading the nation in QBR, which is the QB rating quotient or index that... Uh, is uh, ESPN, they have a, a whole team of analytic guys and statistic uh, guys and, and put a formula together and it's really probably the best barometer of how you're playing. As a quarterback, it takes into account uh, your rushing, your the sacks that you've uh, taken, the throwing aspect of it, uh, the competition level. I mean, there's just a whole extensive formula. And Travis is number one right now. And uh, that's great. I mean, that's, that's a big reason why we're 4-0 is the, is the play of the quarterback. Utah punter Tom Hackett was named the Ray Guy National Punter of the Week and also claimed Pac-12 Special Teams Player of the Week honors. He did his best Odell Beckham Jr. impression on a fake punt in the third quarter against the Ducks. No, I was telling someone that uh, Andy Phillips on the uh, he's, a, he's on the second team for the hands team. So I'm trying to take his job. <laughs> in terms of football players, I don't know, I just punt the ball. So man, some people might consider me a punter, some people might consider me a football player, some people might consider me fat. You know, maybe I'm all three, who knows? But uh... Hackett is definitely a football player. Josh, an unbelievable win. I think going in, a lot of us may have thought that the Utes had a good chance to go in there based mm -hmm. on the Ducks' performance so far this season. But did anyone see this kind of a dismantling by the Utes? Did you get any hint during the, the week that they were capable of something like this? You know, I think leading up to the prep, there was a lot of optimism around the team. I mean, they've been very optimistic, much more so than they were last year. And so you could see that they were going to go into this game believing that they could win. Now, whether external forces outside of the, the program believed that they could win, you know, I don't think many people really did. Um, but I think looking back at last year, how close they really were up until that Kalen Clay fumble kind of showed some signs that, that Utah actually is really close, that they were close to this and they had an opportunity to beat Oregon. But going to Autzen Stadium is not an easy feat. So I, I, I have to believe that, that Utah football on its own was really the only ones that believed that, that they could truly win this game. 62-20 yeah, to 20 was just an no. amazing performance. The way Utah dismantled Oregon made waves throughout the college football world. The Utes moved up from number 18 to number 10 in the latest AP Top 25. It's the earliest the Utes have ever cracked the top 10 in the polls in school history. The win was so impressive, many national writers are putting Utah in the college football playoff conversation after four weeks. In fact, some believe Utah should be ranked number one in the country. It's fun for us to talk about it, but Kyle Whittingham doesn't want to hear any of it. Don't even, don't even go there. We're, we're not even, that's not even in the realm of our thought process. We're just trying to figure out a way to beat Cal. Period. That's where it begins. That's where it ends. We got to keep grounded, you know, be humble about it. You know, yes, we won, but it's easily someone can beat us next week. And so we just got to keep going. First of all, you can't think you got all the answers and win a, win a big game and start, uh, you know, thinking that, that you've arrived because you haven't. You, know, you don't, you don't want to get ahead of yourself. That, that's stupid to get ahead of yourself. And so we've got to understand that we played a good football game. We'd like to build off it. You know, we, got to, we want to repeat the things that we did in the preparation process leading up to that game because that was the biggest key is the game was won long before Saturday. The game wasn't won on Saturday. It was won Monday through Friday. And our guys got to understand that, and we got to get back to work. And uh, as soon as you back off just the least little bit and uh, think that you've got answers and, and start projecting, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, then someone's going to smack you. And so you got to keep your focus, keep your work ethic, keep the same preparation model and process, and attack it one at a time, one by one by one. You know, Kyle Whittingham, of course, has the right approach for the team. They, they have no business talking about that yet. They still got so much games left to go, eight in a row in Pac-12 play after the bye week. But, Josh, we can talk about it. They're in a position right now at 4-0 with the win they have over Oregon and where they're ranked to make a run. And I look at the schedule, and it's very possible, right? Absolutely. I mean, as Whittingham said, and he took the right approach, you know, we've got to focus on one game at a time, and that's, that's very much his mindset. But... Cal is a beatable team. Their offense is really good. Jared Goff is a fantastic quarterback, one of the best in the conference. Um, but they're beatable. Their defense isn't as great as, as some of the others that Utah's going to face this year. Arizona State's looking like they're down. You know, 
Utah's had a really hard time with Arizona State since joining the Pac-12, but they look fine. USC seems like the biggest threat to them moving forward, but right now their resume shows that they're a fantastic team. They've beat some quality opponents, especially with Michigan winning. Um, they're, they're doing great things at a great time. Whether they deserve that number one spot, I, I don't know quite there, um, but I mean, I, I think they're right there in that discussion. The top ten teams, maybe college football playoff teams, and, and I think it benefits having Kyle Whittingham, who has undefeated seasons under his belt, to kind of show this team, you know, it takes, it takes a week-by-week -week process. It's not a matter of showing up one day and, and expecting to roll over these teams. And you look forward in their schedule at USC's the toughest road test maybe Arizona mm -hmm. uh, they obviously struggle with the Wildcats but and in UCLA is at home in November mm -hmm. where weather could be a factor the schedule just looks like it's there for them for the taking and obviously they're going to focus one game at a time but the path is there absolutely you know I mean this is the year that if Utah really wants to make their mark th this is going to be it you're, you're not necessarily seeing these powerhouse teams the Oregon's of, of the past that that are dominating and it's it's Oregon and then everybody else Utah could be that team it could be Utah and then everybody else it's just a matter of taking that week by week approach and making sure that they play sound efficient effective football as, as Kenneth Scott talked about yesterday yeah and you make a great point with the seniors on this team this is now the time well Utah's win over Oregon Oregon overshadowed some other impressive road wins in Pac-12 play. In fact, the only home team to win this week was Colorado over Nickel State. Let's take a look. A trip around the Pac-12 begins in the desert. 16th ranked Arizona hosting number nine UCLA. Scooby right back for the Wildcats, but he wasn't a factor. Josh Rosen was after poor performance against BYU. He bounced back with 284 yards passing and two touchdowns. That Thomas Duarte catch was unbelievable. Arizona was a mess. Three turnovers and UCLA took advantage. Paul Perkins scored three touchdowns and UCLA moves to 4-0. USC bounced back from their home loss to Stanford by pummeling Arizona State in Tempe. Cody Kessler had a big night, 375 yards passing and five touchdowns. Adoree Jackson starts things off with an 80-yard score. And the defense would score, too. Chris Hawkins, he's going to scoop and score a 94-yard fumble return for a touchdown. Well, the Sun Devils turn the ball over four times. They may not be very good this year. USC gets a nice win. Utah will host Cal after the bye week on October 10th. Game time announced will be 8 p.m. Mountain Time. The Bears took it to the Huskies on Saturday. Jared Goff, as we mentioned, is a special quarterback. He threw for 342 yards and two scores. The Cal defense forced five turnovers, and the Bears are 4-0 for the first time since 2007. They enjoyed the win in the locker room. You know it. What? Tell the story. What? You tell the whole man what? This is bad. And on Thursday night, Stanford took it to Gary Anderson and the Badgers. Christian McCaffrey rushed for 206 yards. And how about Kevin Hogan? Playing hurt, throws two big touchdown passes. The Cardinal ran away with this one in the second half, outscoring the Beavers 21-7 in the final 30 minutes. It's going to be a long year in Corvallis. Stanford, however, has bounced back nicely after that loss to Northwestern, now 3-1. So, Josh, after watching this week's Pac-12 play, what was the biggest surprise to you? What stood out to you the most? I think uh, the biggest surprise to me was the fact of Arizona. You know, last week yeah. we talked about Arizona probably being one of the better teams in the conference. Uh, UCLA came back out there and, and bounced back from the UCLA or the BYU game, excuse me, and and really showed that they are probably a top 10 team as well. Uh, they they managed to take over some some uh, turnovers from Arizona, but overall Arizona didn't look like the team that some had expected. You mentioned last week you were worried about their soft schedule, and it looked like they just weren't ready for the kind of team they were going to face with UCLA. That soft schedule early hurt them, while you're seeing other teams with a stronger schedule early have been benefiting from that. Absolutely. I mean, you look at USC. USC, they had that one loss to Stanford, but they still seem like they're rolling. Now, whether they're able to keep that up, I mean, that, that's obviously to be seen. But I think you're seeing some of these, these teams starting to separate. The Arizona schools maybe not living up to the hype. Maybe the LA schools living up to that hype yeah. to a part. And then Utah thrown in that mix with Stanford and Cal. And Stanford looks to be, along with Cal, the best teams in the Absolutely. North. Absolutely. Uh, division. We leave you, as always, with our Legends segment. In honor of Utah's impressive win at Oregon, we asked you on Twitter, what are the five most important regular season wins in program history? Now, we said regular season. This does not include bowl wins like the Sugar and the Fiesta Bowls, just regular season wins, and does not include the win against Oregon since we really don't know yet how big that win is. 
So let's start with number five, and we're going way back. Led by Danny Arizona White State. and future NFL Hall, Hall of Famer Mike back. Haynes, the Arizona State Sun Devils came to Salt Lake City in 1973 with a 12-game winning streak, a 7-0 record, and a number eight ranking. Quarterback Dan Van Galder and Steve Odom led the Utes to a 30-10 lead, and they held off a Sun Devil rally to claim just the second win in Utah history over a ranked opponent and first against a top 10 opponent. For years, Utah played second to BYU in the in-state rivalry. The tide finally changed in 1993 with big plays from Curtis Marsh and Jamal Anderson, with perhaps the biggest coming from Utah's kicker. This changed the rivalry forever, this moment right here. 55 yards, 30 seconds on the clock. It's long enough. Good! BYU had won 14 of the previous 15 games, but since 93, Utah has a series advantage of 14 to 7, winning four straight in five of the last six. And who can forget McBride running around this stadium like crazy. Number three on the countdown was a top 25 matchup between Utah and Colorado State in 1994. An unbeaten Utah team facing a tough back and forth battle with the Rams until this play sealed the win for the Utes. Hill rolling to his left. Hill fires, intercepted. Utah picks it off. Hill Lusk with the interception running free. And Lusk can go the distance. Midfield, he'll score. They won't touch him. Utah is going to win and stay unbeaten. The win was Utah's first win over a top 25 team in 21 years. And only the third in school history. They won on the finish eighth in the country that year. Number two on the countdown is the 2014 sweep of the L.A. schools. We had to combine them because they were so important. Beating a top 10 Travis UCLA team on the road and a ranked USC team at home. Rolls out of the pocket. Touchdown, Utah! In. Play fake and he's it downfield. Up for grabs. Touchdown, Drez Anderson in a crowd. 2014 marked Utah's arrival in the Pac-12. The previous year's win over Stanford was a big win for Utah, but in 2014, the Utes were able to follow those wins up. That went up with a solid season. And, of course, we all remember this epic battle between the 10th-ranked Utes and 11th-ranked Horn Frogs in 2008. Utah's defense kept it close enough for Brian Johnson and Freddie Brown to make you history. Johnson has the football. Looks left side. Pass. Touchdown! 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 Unbelievable! What a drive that was. Utah's 13-10 win over TCU vaulted them in the BCS rankings, ultimately leading to Utah's Sugar Bowl appearance against Alabama.